It's official. The campaign for the U.S. presidency is now longer, much longer, than the four-year term of office of those campaigning for it. At least that's what it feels like. And it's full of strange agonies and inexplicable deeds which make it appear even longer. Joe Biden's stump speech, for example. Now, Biden doesn't exactly speak to a stump, nor happily does the stump reply. Well, thank heaven it's over. And Barack Obama won again with a diminished vote, it's true, but a victor nonetheless. And in politics, victory is the only currency that counts. Everyone of goodwill wishes the returning president the best of fortune dealing with the crises and perils of present-day America. The campaign itself was, in many ways, dirty, small, gritty, and harsh. Burned up outrageous sums of money to fund a gutter wave of negative ads. Hard issues were avoided, petty ones magnified. What Tuesday's numbers reveal is a country with two hardline, mutually hostile camps burying their teeth at each other, composed of rigid and sometimes furious partisans who see their opponents as stumbling in willful darkness and beyond all redemption. Mockery and malice is the idiom of American politics. Money is its fuel, and tribal partisanship will be its undoing. The results are bad news about America. The close vote speaks of a nation at war with itself, rent almost down the center, divided and rancorous. There's a deep negative chasm at the center of the world's most successful democracy. The divide grows deeper and sharper each cycle. The parties and their leaders, managers, press partisans of either side, social media grow more contemptuous and dismissive of the other side each cycle. American is set against American. The language boils to full invective. Cooperation is seen as collaboration with the enemy. America's politics are in this sense devouring that country, robbing it of the will and maturity to face its real dilemmas, threatening economic collapse, unbearable levels of unemployment and debt that is the stuff of nightmare and trillions. What Lincoln said in a time of different peril is true now. A house divided against itself cannot stand. America needs the common shared energies of all its people. If the current crisis and a new term for a now educated in office president does not call up the better energies of America, the United States for so long, despite its imperfections, the beacon of the world, may do to itself what all its enemies together could not. Break the greatest country of the world into ever smaller camps and factions, a mean, hard place from which the great dream has long departed. This is a pivot moment in the history of the United States over which, as this president, Mr. Obama, will now, with great effort, preside. For The National, I'm Rex Murphy.